what's what's with all this proxy reverse nginx engineering is it even no nginx yeah that's right what about cloudflare i mean these are terms you see thrown around out there if you're getting into home labbing and self-hosting there's a lot of things that can be really really overwhelming and if you're browsing subreddits like self-hosted or tech forums and stuff like that these are terms you're going to see a lot of when you start wanting to expose services over the internet when it's coming to your home ip the stuff can be important and it is very important because you don't want to open ports on your router you want to hide your ip address you want to use your own domain name in today's video i'm going to walk you through how to set up cloudflare and nginx proxy manager so let's get started so this is cloudflare this is where we're going to be controlling our domain name so you'll need to sign up with an email address and it'll be a free account and once you sign up you will have to previously have a domain name purchased and ready to go it could be through GoDaddy, it could be through HostGator or Porkbun in my case. I'm using Porkbun, it's a great uh, company. But uh, we will actually add our website by adding the domain name here, just geet.me, click enter. We'll go, go ahead and click this free account right here, confirm plan. And since I previously already had this domain on Cloudflare, there it's already it already found some DNS records, but you probably will see some different things in here. But for me, it, it shows my IP because I already added some things in here. So I'll click continue. And this is where you will see the current name servers that you'll need to change out for the name servers down here where it says replace with our name servers. So we will do that now. And then I will go to Porkbun. If you're not using Porkbun, this will obviously look different for you. Uh, I'm not really sure what it looks like on the other registrars, but for me, it's right here. I just click edit and remove these name servers and just paste in one. And now I'll go back to Cloudflare and grab the other one. So here it is right here. We'll copy this, go back to Porkbun and paste this one in here like that. And then click Submit and we'll go back to Cloudflare. Now all we have to do is just click Done, Check Name Server. So this could take uh, a little bit to, to do or we'll just click get started, that's okay. This is actually a very important step. Um, usually when you're talking about SSL and T TLS encryption mode, um, setting it to full is your best option because if you set it to full strict, you might run into some issues with uh, Let's Encrypt. So leaving it on full is good. Sometimes when you start out, it'll be at flexible and you won't be able to uh, get your SSL certificates to work with that either. So just switch it to full for the best performance is what I found. So click save there. I like to always use HTTPS, which means this will basically force any HTTP. Whenever you type in HTTP rather than HTTPS, it'll automatically convert it to HTTPS for you. So there we go. We'll click save on that. Just leave that how it is. Speed up the page load times. This this can be can be good. And then we'll click finish. It says it's now queued up to be rechecked. Please check back in a few hours and you will get an email to your inbox when it says that it has been completed and your site will be controllable by Cloudflare. So keep that in mind as well that uh, when it is done, you will see that in your inbox. So while we're waiting for that to resolve, we can go ahead and set up Nginx Proxy Manager. And by the time we're done doing that, it should be ready to go so we can use them in conjunction. So let's go ahead and set it up and we'll go from there. Okay, so some full cam real talk really quick here. How am I going to be installing Nginx Proxy Manager? For those of you who were wanting to see me do this on Synology NAS, I'm sorry, but that's not how I do it and that's how I've never done it. I've never actually installed NPM on a Synology NAS and I don't recommend it. And I'll tell you why. There's a couple of reasons. I don't wanna go into this too much because I could be here all day talking about it. One of them is because ports 80 and 443 need to be used to it used for uh, NPM. And they're not freed up on Synology NAS because it uses those for web services. And the second reason is efficiency. I like to tinker a lot. And because I like to tinker a lot, I make mistakes. And this is how I learn using a home lab is I use different smaller machines on a Proxmox node for my tinkering. And that way I can make really quick backups and I can do snapshots as well. So if I screw something up, I can just click roll back and go right back to where I started. And I can have all of my certificates and all of my services right back to where they were without an issue. I can't do that on Synology. I just love the efficiency of being able to use this with Proxmox. So with that being said, if you have a small PC around with at least eight gigs of RAM, throw Proxmox on it, load up Ubuntu and put Nginx Proxy Manager on that. So that's how I'll be installing it so you know moving forward. Let's go. So this is the Nginx Proxy Manager website. It basically explains to you in kind of a little overview of what it is. It says expose your services easily and securely, and you can get free SSLs through Let's Encrypt. 
This is the backbone of our services right here. And this is what we're going to be using to tell our router and tell our domain where the traffic is going on our network. So we're gonna be bringing traffic in from outside and we're telling it where to go so we don't have to open ports on our router. That's what Nginx Proxy Manager is gonna be doing. So let's get it installed on Ubuntu, on Docker, on Proxmox. Don't worry if you don't want to use Proxmox if, and you have a machine laying around that you can throw Ubuntu on. Put Ubuntu on it. Install Docker. I've got a video on how to install Docker on Ubuntu on my channel. So go check it out and get back to me. This is MX Linux and it's a Debian flavor so the commands will be the same. We're only using one command anyways and that command is over here on the Docker Hub page for Nginx Proxy Manager. This is it right here. This is just a command we're going to be running and really all we're going to be changing are these ports right here. So I just popped open a text editor and pasted this command in here and what I'm gonna do is just change these ports from 4443 to just 443 then 8080 to 80 and then 8181 to just 81 now we will make sure we put sudo at the beginning because if you're not in as root you're gonna need that so now we will copy this and toss it into our terminal launch it anyway and then we will paste that in there and run it and this will take a couple minutes to pull the image down. Um, since I'm on a Proxmox VM, it's gonna take a little bit longer. So once it, everything pulls down and we get it up and running, this should do the trick. So I'll get back to you guys once this is done. And it has completed. So this means we need to open the IP of our Nginx proxy manager server. So whatever machine you installed it on, you'll go to that IP, the local IP, and then port 81. So let's go there now. Wham, here it is. This is the Nginx proxy manager web UI login. So you will log in your first time using admin at example.com. If I can type, and then the password is change me and you don't want to save that. And then here you can click, you can put in your name. Mine's Jeremy. Uh, nickname, I'll say geeked, and then it's NAS hosted, which is what I usually use, and then click save. You need to change the password. The current one is change me, and then put in a super secret one, and click save. You have successfully set up Nginx Proxy Manager. That was so easy. All it was was tossing a command into your terminal. Just don't forget that you have to install Docker first, otherwise this won't work. So if you struggled with installing this without Installing Docker first, that's probably why, because you didn't install Docker. And uh, I did mention in, earlier in the video that you can go check out my video on how to install Docker on Ubuntu in less than two minutes. All right, I'm getting excited now. Uh, we've got NPM set up here, so Cloudflare should be good to go now. We set that up previously, so our DNS and everything should be good to go. I've got the email saying that, hey, we're ready to control your domain. So let's go over there and create an A record and find a service that we can uh, expose and try to access remotely. Bingo, it says right here at the top on the Cloudflare dashboard, great news, Cloudflare is now protecting your site. So this is good. Let's go to the DNS dashboard. I need to think of a service that I wanna expose first and I think I know what I'm gonna do. In my last video I did my Synology NAS so I think that would probably be a good fit for this so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So here I am on my Synology NAS on DSM. There's a couple things here that we need to take note of and that is the local IP which is the LAN IP which is 192.168.1.110 and the HTTPS port, the secure port which is 6301 and you can change these. The default one in fact is 5001 and the HTTP will be 5000. I highly recommend changing these for a little more added security, but let's take note of what these are because this is the information we're going to have to enter into Nginx Proxy Manager. But before we do that, we have to create an A record in Cloudflare for our domain name. So this is kind of like giving your service a name through your domain. So let's just go ahead and call this NAS. We'll create a a new record and since we're sending traffic to our NAS we'll call it NAS and then it'll give you an example here it'll say nas.geek.me which is what we want uh, the IPv4 is going to be your home address so unfortunately if you don't have good long lease or a static IP you don't really need a static IP I don't have a static IP I just have good long leases on my IP so I've never had my IP change unless I either change my router Mac or get a new gateway and I've never had that happen so if you do have that happen this probably won't work for you so 
Sorry about that. You might need to go the DDNS route. Go ahead and put your home IP in here. And then you want to uncheck this right here. And you need to uncheck this because when you have that orange, it cloaks your domain name with a Cloudflare IP address. When you're trying to assign your certificate in Nginx Proxy Manager to this domain name, it needs to see your home IP so it can figure out where to forward that traffic through Nginx Proxy Manager. Oh, that sounds so confusing, I know. And then once we do that through Nginx Proxy Manager, we can come back here and re-enable the proxy to cloak your IP. So right now you need to have that turned off and then put your home IP in here and click save. All right, now we are ready to head back to Nginx Proxy Manager to set up our proxy host. Let's do that now. Look, I get it. If you've made it this far in the video, I understand that this is confusing. A lot of back and forth, this and that. Trust me, I know. But it is important at the same time that these things are done in order. Let's jump back into it and create our first proxy host here. So by clicking on dashboard and then go click on the proxy host here, there's a nice fancy green button. We can click and add our domain that we just created, nas.geeked.me. Then we'll press enter on your keyboard. We'll change the scheme to HTTPS. You don't have to always do this, but if you're using a secure port, then you have to change this. If you're not using a secure port and you're just using a different port, then the scheme will always stay as HTTP. So know that going forward. The IP, if you remember, was 192.168.1.110. That's the IP of my NAS. And the secure port was 6301, because I changed it. Block common exploits for a, a little extra security. I don't need WebSocket support. Now I just need to go ahead and snatch the uh, certificate from Let's Encrypt. So click on SSL certificate, it'll say none. Click on none and request a new SSL certificate. You wanna make sure always force SSL is turned on. Sometimes it's good to enable HTTP and two support, but for this one, I'm not going to enable that. And then just agree to the terms and click save. This will take a couple seconds because Let's Encrypt needs to go ahead and verify that it can see the traffic. And once it finishes, it will bring you back to the dashboard here where you can see your proxy host. And let's go ahead and make sure that it's secure. Sometimes this bugs out. You'll have to click on the little three dots and click edit. Go back to SSL and make sure force SSL is enabled because we want to make sure that it uses SSL every time that domain is accessed. So let's click save again and you shouldn't have to do that ever again after that. Now we should be able to access our NAS by just clicking this proxy host here. So let's do that now. And here we are. So I can go ahead and log in using my DSM username and password. Oops, I almost put the wrong one in. It's kind of a long password. All right, so it sometimes can take a couple seconds to process. All right, and here it is. And another thing I wanted to mention really quick is the two-step authentication. Always very important to enable this where you can and thankfully Synology has this option and I'll show you guys how to enable that right here. So here I am on my Synology NAS. I will go to control panel to click on user. This is where you're going to find that. So you'll click user. Then here at the top, you will click on the advanced tab and scroll down to two-step verification. And if you don't have this enabled and you're doing this for the first time and you click this to enforce it, It'll have you set up a notification where you'll have to put in an email. Then once you do that, it'll allow you to set this up and it will take you through a quick process where you have to uh, find an app on the App Store. Most of them are free. You can find tons of them that are really good. I use Authy, it's spelled A-U-T-H-Y. Then it'll ask you to scan a QR code through that app and then you'll be done. And if for whatever reason you forget your phone or you lose your phone, there is a fail safe option for this as well. So a very good option to have if you expose your Synology NAS over the internet. So one last thing I wanna do before we close this off is go back to Cloudflare and I didn't forget about this. You wanna make sure you edit the entry that you made and we want to go ahead and make sure we click this to make it orange so it says proxied and then click save. Whenever someone does ping that domain, it'll come back as a Cloudflare IP address. Don't forget to do that. It does take about five minutes to take effect. So if you ping it and it still gives your home address, don't worry. Eventually about five minutes from now, it will show up as a Cloudflare IP. Give it some time, it'll work. Okay, that's gonna wrap up the video and I think I owe you guys an apology because this video should have been what the last video was. Unfortunately, it's not. I'm kind of new to YouTube if you haven't noticed already. Uh, I don't have a ton of subscribers and um, I tend to do things out of order sometimes. Sorry for that. I'll try not to make that uh, a common occurrence here on this channel. If you did learn something from this video and you love what I do, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or concerns about this, be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you on board. Click the bell icon if you want to know when the videos drop. It'll send you a push notification on your phone saying, yo, Geek just dropped a video. Go check it out. I would love that. That is going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.